Hi guys, I'm Rob Gouvet from UBL Designs. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to create a secure login. I will be using PDO for my um, connection to the database. You can use MSQLI if you want or any other types you can actually think of. Um, the reason I'll be using PDO is because that's what I use in general development uh, life. We will be also using SHA-256 because that's one of the most secure uh, encryptions for our password and we'll also be using a method called salt and pepper but I'll be using salt, pepper and sauce because I believe that's uh, a little bit more secure. So this is the form what we'll be submitting. So down in the description there is a link to the download files for the project. You'll see there's a dashboard, an index, a logout and within the libs there's an authorization we've got some styling just basic styling just so you can get the form basically there's an application within the application we're going to have a BD, uh, pdo uh, config and a connection i'll show you how to set that up and then we're going to have controllers which is basically just the login all of them are blank apart from the CSS at the moment and HTML is just the basic HTML of the form and I'll talk you through on how to do everything else. So I'm on my Dreamweaver, you can use anything you like. I tend to use Dreamweaver or Notepad++ depending on um, what code I'm actually writing. We'll go to the index file. I've included, this will be exactly the same in your files as the startup files. There will be a PDO included and a login included. And if you have a look, the PDO and login are empty. But the style sheet isn't, just a basic few lines of CSS, which basically just makes that look decent. So the first thing we need to do is we need to open up our configuration of that and we need to set our database up. Just quickly, I've had to just jump in. I've just about to render the video and I realized I didn't show you the database. I've already given you, uh, or I'm about to give you the credentials on the actual database, on the actual database name, login, tutorial, the username and the password. So I won't get into that. What I will show you is the table I uh, created, which is called users. If I click into the users and go to the structure, I did an ID and it's going to be an integer 11. I've also set it to a primary and I've set it to um, increment, auto increment. The reason for that, you might have more than one user. I didn't put that in the thing on how to create users. It's just literally how to log in with a secure form. So my second one is site user, Votra 255, web pass, a char 64, because we always know it's going to be a char, um, an exact string length of 64 and an slt which is salt of a vartra 32 because that can be random a pep for pepper vartra 32 again because it can be random src short for source uh, again vartra 32 because it can be random and then the last but not least a string of eight and again that can be random it depending on your password um I suggest you call it something different to these. Never call it the standardized stuff because if people are trying to hack the database, they're trying to go for your admins, users, username, password, salt, pepper, all of them type of things. I would suggest keeping them uh, simple to yourselves, but not what the common things are. For instance, on password, I've known people call it ECP. I've known people call it PAPS. And, and, and stuff like that, uh, which is acronyms for whatever they want it to be. Just don't keep it standardized, guys. Keep it random, keep the hackers at bay. Now, back over to the tutorial. Define, and then we need to set up our database, which is DB database, all capital letters. We then need to set up our connection, which is MySQL host equals, and now it's going to be a local host, and that's if you're online or 
if you're using WAMP or MAMP or whatever software you're using to be offline. We're then going to call the database name, which is for this sake login tutorial. So that's our database defined. Now we're going to do another define action or method. And we're going to go db database user. And we're going to use, now for this one, I've used just user. And then rather than type it all out, let's copy and paste that and just change that one for db underscore database password. And then for this, I've left it blank. You can change that to whatever you need or whatever your database is. So I'll save that. And now our database is defined. So now we've got our database defined. We now need to open up our connection because this is the important part on um, making our website actually connect to our database. So the very first thing we need um, every instance when you're de uh, dealing with login systems or anything what controls uh, what users interact with, you need a session start. This basically makes it so you can store sessions and without it, you can't store sessions, it's simple as. So we need to then require the actual um, PDO config file, which was um, the file we just altered to get our connection. Next, we need to do a date default time zone. The reason for this is a lot of servers if throw up errors if you don't set a time zone because some servers need it. For instance, if I have a server in Japan, but I don't want to be a Japanese uh, time frame, I want it to be my UK time. I have to set it to Europe, London. So let's call the function default time zone. Oh, that's a set not a get <laughs> so it's date default time zone set and then I'm just going to copy and paste my time zone if you want to know about time zones just put in Google PHP and then type in that and you'll get all time zones from your area or all across the world now we need to use a try because at the end of the day, we need to see if we can catch something. And if we do, if PDO is available, let's define PDO equals new PDO. We'll then call in our database, which we defined. We'll then call in our database user, what we defined. And then last, our database password, what we defined. So if we don't, if there is no connection, let's catch. And we'll catch the PDO expression. error report so that's just basically saying that if there isn't give us an error on what's happening of why you can't connect so last but not least let's actually call the error report and get the message And finally, we need to set the attribute and it's PDO, double colon, double colon, attribute error mode, PDO 
double colon, double colon, error mode. Warning. Now that should be our connection set up. It sounds confusing, I know guys, but at the end of the day, it will get. Now, if this sounds confusing, if you type, go over to um, PDA, which I've already got it up, I believe. Here we go. Here we are. This is one PDO connections. It will give you a load of uh, examples on how to connect and what exactly it means. And basically all you do is you type in Google PDO connections PHP and then that will come up. Here's a bit about your time zones on how to set your time zone and why you need to set it. And it will give you loads of instructions if you need to read about it. And again, if you want to know exactly what PDO is, there's PDO on the introduction of PDO. And all of this can be found at php.net. It's their number one resource for PHP. They develop it after all. So we've set up our connection now. And now what's left to do is to start our actual login. So we'll jump over back over to the index. We no longer need it. We've now got our PDO section here. Now let's make sure this works. So we'll go over to here and make sure there's no errors. If there's no errors, we'll be fine. There's no errors, so we're absolutely fine. We're now connected to our database. So first thing we need to do is open up our login controller because that's going to be running side by side. I don't actually need this because I've got Dreamweaver, which links it in anyway. But open it up if you don't have that because this is going to be a necessity. Right, the first thing we need to do is we need to set uh, the session to ch check if the user accepts sessions. So we're going to define it with access user and we're just going to go hash sharp 256 testing its user sessions so we've defined a session now but first we need to make sure that this person is logged in if he's already an admin and already logged in he doesn't need to see this login page so we need to divert him straight to the dashboard so the, the way we do that is go first of all I'll just put a comment check if the admin is already logged in and if so send to dashboard so we do that by going to session and the one what I'm going to use just for this tutorial is admin logged in. I always do capitals. You don't have to do capitals. I do just so it defines and it stands out. So I forgot that is set. That's a really bad. But if you put if uh, session admin, it generally is saying if there is one. But let's be more defined and say if is set and is not empty. So if the session is set and the session isn't empty, let's redirect him to the admin area. Now, there are a lot of ways to do redirects in this and a lot of servers, well, I won't say a lot, a few servers won't accept their header function. Um, it will sometimes throw up a um, header is already set. Now, if that's the case, you've got a really old server, you need update server or you've got a coding error. Now, generally, if you haven't got a coding error and your server is fairly modern, this should be all right. So let's set the location just to dashboard.php. 
So basically, I'm checking that the user has a session by starting the session. I will be calling that session in a bit, and if he hasn't got it, I'll be kicking him off. <laughs> and then I'm also then checking if the admin's logged in. So I'm seeing is the admin session uh, logged, and if it is, make sure it's not empty, and if it isn't empty, redirect him. I'm going to conclude this part one. Please, guys, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It'll help my channel. And also, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. The link is in the description regarding part two if you want to go and see part two. So I'll see you next time.